Hello and welcome to this exploring session and today we are completing our journey through the uh, Marriage of Wit and Science uh, variation 2 of a of an ongoing process of uh, changing and rewritten plays um, and um, we, we've done two acts so far and if you've gone back and watched the video of the play, uh, the play of science um, uh, that uh, we, we did uh, earlier, uh, play of wit and science, um, there's, that play doesn't have an opening. There's a few missing pages. So effectively what we've done so far is pretty much the bit that that play doesn't have. Uh, I actually went back and checked. Um, so that play had no conversation with uh, M Mother Nature and Wit uh, and any of those sort of introductory remarks. We don't know if the two plays are opened in the same way or whether there's, uh, there's a different emphasis. Um, but in terms of the narrative, we're sort of now leaping into where that earlier play survives for us. So um, it's quite a, an interesting little journey that we will now be taking as we go through the rest of the play, which we have met, just to confuse you even further, earlier when we looked at a later version of this play. It's all very confusing. All these plays have very similar titles and they do my head in. As far as we're concerned, this is variation two. That's, that's what I call it in internal policy because I have no idea what to call these damn plays. Because uh, I always forget. Um, so if you want to find out what's been going on, go back and watch um, any of the other videos, actually, and you'll probably get a, a sense of where we are. Um, none of it really matters for what we're doing today. Reading today, we have this wonderful read, uh, room of readers. Uh, so uh, reading diligence today. Who is diligent? I am very diligent today, feeling very diligent. I'm Sarah Blake. I'm an actor, writer and director living in Germany. Uh, reading the part of wit today is... Hi, I'm Francis Cox, actor coming to you from sweltering Amsterdam. And uh, reading will today is... Hello, Dan Healing from sweltering Montpellier. <laughs> <laughs> and reading a reason, tediousness, and idleness is. On Scott in Suffolk and trying to be idle because of the heat. And uh, reading science, study, and ignorance today is. Hi, my name's Elizabeth Missing, and I'm an author living in Watford. And reading experience, instruction, recreation, and shame is. Hello, I'm Helen Good, and I'm coming to you from Barmy, Yorkshire. Yes, everyone seems to be quite warm today. Uh, I'm your host, Robert Crichton. I will be uh, dancing us through some of the textual issues that we will hit. We may hit several as we go. We may find that there's some material in the wrong place. I haven't got around to checking whether it's in the wrong place. So uh, we may find that there's some confusion, but it may have already been adjusted before I got this copy. So who knows? This is an exciting journey that we have as we go into Act 3. Broadly speaking, this is sort of a quest of love as Wit wants to, uh, wants to uh, marry science and they've uh, turned up at, uh, at uh, uh, the, the science's uh, parents' house and um, Wit sent his will ahead to sort of inveigle them into the household. And, uh, and so hopefully perhaps some wooing will occur. I don't know, who knows? Maybe this play is totally different from the other two versions we've read. So we're going straight into act three as it's marked. Act three, scene one, enter Wit and Will. Says thou me so, boy, will she have me indeed? You have good cheer, sir. I want you to speak. Did both her parents be well to hear of me? As hard can think. Go on and you shall see. How took she the picture? How liketh she my person? She had never done she never had done toting and tooking thereon. And then and when must I come to talk with her, my Phil? Whensoever you please, and as oft as you will. O oh, my sweet boy, how shall I recompense thy faithful heart and painful diligence? My hope, my stay, my wealth, the key of all my joy. I pray you, sir, call me your man and not your boy. Thou shalt be what thou wilt, all in all. Promise me faithfully that if your wife brawl or set her father to check me out of measure, you will not see me abuse to their pleasure. Give me thy hand. Take care my faith and troth. I will maintain thee, howsoever the world goeth. 
And we'll just briefly pause there to mark we're going into Act 3, Scene 2. This is where we might be in the wrong order, but I don't know if we are or not. The scene uh, says we're going into the House of Science. Wit and Will are presumably still on stage. Also, Reason and Science behind. Let's see if the narrative continues logically. <laughs> what shall we do? Shall we stand lingering here? If you be a man, press in and go near. What, what if there be some other suitor there? And if there be, yet need you not to fear until I bring his head to you upon a spear. I will not look you in the face nor in your sight appear. Nay, wilt advise yourself and pause a while, or else this haste of yours will you beguile. No haste but good. Take time and learn to fight. Learn to assault, learn to defend the right. Your match is monstrous to behold and full of might. Whom you must vanquish, not by force, but by slight. Adam, stand your promise. If I win, I am spared. Am I not? Yea, truly. Good enough. If we fight not, I would we were dead. No man shall stay us that bears a head. Young man. A word or twain, and then adieu. Your years are few, your practice green and new. Mark what I say, and ye shall find it true. You are the first that shall this rashness rue. Be ruled here, our counsel do the thereafter. Lay good ground, your work shall be the faster. This headlong haste may sooner miss than hit. Take heed both of witless will and willful wit, and have within a gentleman, our retainer and our friend, with servants twain that do him to him do on him attend. Instruction, study, diligence, these three, at your commandment in this attempt shall be. Hear them instead of us, and as they shall devise, so hardily cast your cards in this enterprise. I'll send them to you and leave you for now. The more company, the, the merrier. Boy, what sayst thou? It is a good fault to have more than enough. I care not, so we may put the knaves down. I would we were at it, I pass not how soon. If it shall please you to send these three hither, we will follow your counsel and go together. I warrant her a shrew, whatsoever be another. God make the daughter good, I like not the mother. Yet would not I, for, for no good, to have foregone her. Marry, sir, indeed she talks and takes on her like a dame, nay, like a duchess or a queen, with such a solemnity as I have not seen. She is a queen, I tell thee, in her degree. Let her be what she list, with a vengeance for me. I will keep her out of reach if I can. If this marriage go forward, thou must be her man. Marriage or marriage not, beshrew me then. I have but one master, and I will serve no more. And if he anger me, I will forsake him too. She shall not hurt thee, unless her cause be just done. By the faith of my body, sir, I intend not to trust her. Why? Take me this woman that talks so roundly, that be so wise, that reasons so soundly, that looks so narrow, that speaks so shrill. Their words are not so cursed, but their deeds are ill. It is but by fancy. I see no such thing in her. <laughs> Perhaps you never had occasions to try her. That were great marvel in so many years. She hath won the mastery of you, it appears. Oh, quiet yourself. Thou shalt take no wrong. We three, me think our three companions tarry very long. And we move into Act 3, Scene 3. Instruction, study, diligence, reason, wit, and will are on stage. Sir. We are come to know your pleasure. You are come in good time, instruction, our treasure. This gentleman of Cravis, your acquaintance, aid. What you may do for him, let him not be denied. Welcome, good fellows. Will ye dwell with me? If all parties be pleased, content are we. Welcome, instruction, with all my heart. What? Three new servants? And farewell, my part. I heartily thank you. And look what I can do. I shall be always ready to pleasure you. Consider and talk together with these, and you shall find in your travail great ease. Take care of me before I take my leave. This glass of crystal clear, 
which I you give, accept it and reserve it for my sake, most sure, much good to you in time it may procure. Behold yourself therein and view and cry, mark what defects it will discover and descry. And so with judgment bright and curious eye, what is amiss endeavour to supply. Farewell. Farewell to you, right honourable sir, and commend me to my love, my heart's desire. Let her think on me when she sees me not, and wish me well. Farewell, Master Reason. Think upon us when you see us not, and in any wise, let not will be forgot. Since I must take advice and counsel of you three, I must entreat you all to dwell in house with me, and look what order you shall prescribe as needful. To keep the same, you shall find me as heedful. Come. I come. I go. I'm just going to pause there to uh, get the sense of um, something's going on. It does feel like we're missing something. Yes. Um, that there's, 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 there's definitely. Uh, it feels like it's all flowing, but it feels like we've missed something uh, when I when I pointed out that there's something something out there. Broadly there's speaking, a, this is where the quest rival. is going to begin. There's a missing rival somewhere. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I three C two in there, but there's some rival that they were considering having a battle with. Mm. But then but, I wondered if it was Will at one point. I wondered if Will was setting himself up as a rival. Uh, just at one point, oh, God, I can't remember which bit of text it was now, but it just, I thought that, I thought there's, there's a rival, where's this rival? And then, and then I thought, oh, is Will the rival? But then I didn't know. I'm Totally uh, I, I think what's going on is we're, we're now approaching the quest narrative where they have to go off and vanquish something uh, and they're being armed up. You know, it's like a quest. You end up in, in Rivendell, you, you rest, uh, you, you collect all your forces and now you have to go out and take out the Balrog. Um, yes. That's that's sort of, you know, the, 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 the way this, this, this is structured, perhaps. Um, and that we may have just missed a little expositionary moment, which we may find randomly later on. Yeah. Instruction, uh, study, and diligence of the Fellowship of the Ring, then. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> and I love the way that Will just goes, three new servants, right? I'm not getting any more lines, am I? <laughs> There's no Council of Elrond moment in the play. Yeah. There's no Council of Elrond where they sit down and say, okay, we're going to go. This is the closest we've had to it so far. Yeah, there's that. There, I, I I suspect that's a moment that we're going to randomly find later on that we uh, that should have lived between scene one and scene two. It, it feels like some exposition is missing. Is well, the right na way? nature did the Gandalf bit early on. Yeah, but that was the sort of overall. You know, this is a quest to get the hand of 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 their daughter. You know, they're in the mm -hmm. household, um, and they're saying to Wit and Will, you know, we'll give you some friends, but you have to go and vanquish this, and then you can marry science. Uh, here is a magic glass, glass of crystal clear um, element, and uh, you know, the, the, and that's very much where we come into the the original iteration of this play in in the surviving text is the handing over of the glass. But isn't the rival what, who Will Wit says at the beginning of three two when he says, "If there be some other suitor there, just assuming there's got to be somebody else who's I, trying to pick her up." I think that's just a projected possibility rather than the thing that they're going to. Vanquish now. Well, what's this crystal? What's it for? Yeah, good question. It's it's who knows? It's a thing. It's a it's a plot <laughs> device. <laughs> it's the MacGuffin. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Take this plot device and to vanquish your foe. It's like the mirror of Galadriel. Yes. <laughs> well, Alan, what, what Alan, is, I've I've seen your hand. Yeah, a couple of things. One, the um. The stage's uh, description at the beginning of scene two um, took me slightly by surprise because I think um, experience should be referenced there as well, um, which is where we yeah. will reason and science and experience. And then at the, I think it's the end of that scene, there's a, um, yeah, the last uh, line from Wit in scene two, I think that's a typo. It is will quiet yourself rather than well quiet yourself. Uh, would make, make more sense. 
Yeah. It, it's more like it's it's the Pike moment. It's shut up, stupid boy. Yeah. And um, there was a toting which should have been doting. It's, well, it says toting in the text. I don't care. It should yeah. be doting. Uh, <laughs> where actually, where is that? Yeah. Right at the beginning of where we started reading, it's about four or five lines down from where we started today. Yeah. Well, the thing also is because I say in our text we had looking or something, but it actually it says toking, as in toking, mm. which I changed back to um, toking. So, yeah, had never done to, uh, to uh, yeah, it might not be toting, it might be a looking kind of toting, looking, yeah, that might be where it's going from. Yeah. That makes All sense. Right. All right, all right. Well, also, the, um, the, um, <laughs> the, the entrances mainly do not include um, locations or include all the, the people who are supposed to be in the scenes there. Yeah, so they're very... So a lot of incomplete. Yeah, the, 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 we, we've got a, a modicum of data, but not all of it, and it's, uh, it's very, very sparse, you know. Uh, okay, I'm uh, just looking to see if I've got any additional things. No, no, that's not actually helpful at all. Um, so uh, let's move on. Let's see if we can get some more data. So we're currently labeled as going into Act 4, um, but it, uh, I, and it says exit, but I kind of feel that this just runs straight on to the from where we stopped, actually. So Wit is talking to instruction, and Will steps in and wit instruction etc et are all still talking to each other so that seems a slightly misplaced question there anyway uh will start speaking tush tush instruction your talk is of no force you tell us a tale of a roasted horse which buys wounds except we set to it as fast as we make these fellows were unto it their talk is nothing but soft and fair and tarry if you follow their counsel you shall never marry to follow our counsel your charge and promise was? I, I would I had never known you by the mass. I must look so long and spend my life with toil. Nay, sure, I will either win it or take the foil. The surer is your ground, the better you shall bear it. Ground us no ground, let him win it and wear it. Good sir, be ruled and leave this peevish elf. I had even as Leafy bade me hang myself. Leave him? No, no. I would you all knew. You be but loiterers to him. My will tells me true. I could be content with a week, yea, a month or twain, but three or four years marry, that were a pain. So long to keep me and lie like a hog. And like with all my heart, I would not wish a dog. Will a week serve? No. A month? Neither. No. Not so. No, nor many more. Then farewell all, for as I hope to thrive, I will prove him ere I sleep if I be alive. And if he be mine, and good fellows all three, go thither out of hand and take your chance with me. For my part, I know I can do you no good. You are a proper man of your hands by the rood, yet well fare him that never his master forsaketh. What sayest thou, study? My head aches. Out upon thee, coward, speak, diligence. Against instruction's mind, I am loath to go hence, yet I will make one, rather than you should lack. Perhaps we may find them at this time in bed. <laughs> so much the rather look you to be sped. Careful no more, but wants to come within her. When you have done, <laughs> then let another win her. To come within her, child? What meanest thou by that? One mass for a penny. You know what is what. Had you ever such a counsel of such a jack sprat? Why, sir, do you think to do any good if you stand in a corner like Robin Hood? Nay, you must start it and face it out with the best. Set on a good countenance. Make the most of the least. Whosoever skipping, look to your part, and while you live, beware of a false heart. Both blame and shame rash boldness doth breed. Yea, you must adventure both. Spare to speak, spare to speed. What tell you me of shame? It is shame to steal the horse. More haste than good, more haste than good speed makes many fare the worse. And he that takes not such time while he may shall leap at a whiting when time is away. 
But he that leaps before he look, good son, may leap in the mire and miss when he hath done. Enter science, reason, and experience. Me think I hear the voice of will, wits go. I see her come, her sorrow and my joy, my salve and yet my sore, my comfort and my care, the causer of my wound, and yet the well of my welfare. O oh, happy white that hath the saint of your request, O oh, hopeless hope that holdeth me from that which likes me best, twixt hope and fear I stand, to mar or else to make, this day to be relieved quite, or else my death wound to, to take. Here let us rest a while and pause all three. Daughter, sit down. Belike this same is he. Be of good cheer, sir. Be ruled by me. Women are best pleased till they be used homely. Look her in the face and tell your tale stoutly. O pearl of passing price, sent from God on high, the sweet of, sweetest beauty to entice that has seen with eye, the well of wealth to all that no man doth annoy, the key of kingdoms and the seal of everlasting joy, the treasure and the store whom all good things began, the nurse of lady wisdom's love, the link of man and man. What words shall me suffice, suffice to utter my desire? What heat of talk shall I devise for to express my fire? I burn and yet I freeze, I flame and cool as fast, in hope to win and for to lease my pensiveness doth the pensiveness doth the last. Why should my dull spirit appall my courage so? O oh, salve my sore, or slay me quite by saying yea or no. You are the mark at whom I shoot to hit or miss. My life it stays on you alone. To you my sweet suit it is, a suit of much unmeet with you some grace to find. Dame nature's son, my name is wit, that fant fancieth you by kind. <clears throat> and here I come this day to wait and to attend, in hope to have my hope to pray, or else my life to end. Good cause there is, wherefore I should embrace this loving heart which you have brought to me. And glad I am that we be both in place each one of us each other's looks to see your picture and your person doth agree your prince-like port and eke your noble face wherein so many signs of virtue be that i must needs be moved in your case friend wit are you the man indeed which you intend can you be well content until your life doth end to join and knit most sure with this my daughter here and unto her alone your fixed faith to bear? As I am bent to this, let my suit be sped. If I do fail, ten thousand plagues and more light on my head. There are that promise fair and mean as well as any heart can think or tongue can tell, which at the first are hot and kindle in desire, but in one month or twain quite quenched as the fire. Such is the train of youth whom fancies forth doth lead, whose love is only at the plunge, and cannot long proceed. Credit my words, and ye shall find me true. Suppose you keep not touch, who should this bargain rue? I will be sworn here solemnly before you both. Who breaketh promise will not stick likewise to break his oath. I will be bound in all that ever I can make. What good were that to us if we the advantage take? Will neither promise serve, nor oath, nor bands. What other assurance will ye ask at my hands? My master is a gentleman, I tell you and his word, I would you knew it shall with his deeds accord. We not know, we know not whom to trust. The world is so ill. Indeed, sir, as you say, you may mend when you will. But, in good earnest, madam, speak off or on. Shall we speed up your hand or shall we be gone? I love not these delays. Say so if we shall, if we shall have you. If not, say no and let another crave you. Soft and bare, fair, sir, boy, you talk, you what not what. Can you abide to be driven off with this and that? Can they ask any more than good assurance at your hands? All is now too little, son, as the matter stands. If all be too little, good, both goods and lands, I know not what will please you except Darby's bands. 
I have an enemy, my friend Wit. A mortal foe to me, and therewithal the greatest plague that can befall to be. Must I fight with him? Can you fight if need be? Any such far thing far, count the charge to me. Trouble not yourself. Hold thy peace, elf. Hear out my tale, I have a mortal foe that lurketh in the wood hereby as you come and go. This monstrous giant bears a grudge to me and mine, and will attempt to keep thee back from this desire of thine. The bane of youth, the root of ruin and distress, devouring those that suit me, his name is tediousness. No sooner he aspires the noble wit begin to stir and pain itself the love of me to win. But forth he steps, and with strong hands by might and main, he beats and buffets down the force and liveliness of brain. That done, in deep despair, he drowns him villainously. Ten thousand suitors in a year are cast away thereby. Now, if your mind be surely fixed it so, that for no toil nor cost my love you will forego, Bethink you well, and of this monster take good heed. Then may you have with me the greater hope to speed. Herein use good advice to make you strong and stout, to feud and keep him off a while until his rage be out. Then when you feel yourself not able to prevail, bid you the battle and that so courageously assail. If you can win the field, present him with, your, with his head. I ask no more, and I forthwith shall be your own to bed. Ill might I, <clears throat> Ill might I throw, thrive, and lack that likes me best, if I be not a scourge to him that breedeth your unrest. Madam, assure yourself, if he lives not in the land, with whom I would not in your cause encounter hand to hand. As for tediousness, that wretch, your common foe, let me alone. We twain shall cope before I sleep, I trow. Mm -hmm. Lustily spoken. Let me claw thee by the back. How say you now, sir? Here are three against twain. I'm just going to pause there, because I think we found the, uh, where the, uh, the earlier section goes. Um, just between what Will just said and Wit just said, I think a few lines into uh, Act 3, Scene 2, when reason says, nay, wit, advise yourself and pause a while, I suggest it comes immediately after what wit just said there. Because then they say, let's get you some companions, let's get you some followers. Uh, here, have a magic glass. Uh, because we've now, we've, we've come to the beginning of the conversation. And uh, yes, we've, we've, uh, uh, we've, we've, a white hole. Um, so it's, um, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, I, I, I haven't quite figured out precisely where all the gaps live, but um, yeah, there, there's, there's a logical, we, we now know it's they need to fight the monster tediousness. We've got to that plot point, which I was trying not to explain earlier, because uh, I knew it hadn't turned up yet. <laughs> right, and that's why instruction suddenly appears in this scene mm. without, for absolutely no reason at all. Mm. Yes, instruction, instruction has, has been introduced in a in the earlier bit but it turns out yeah and it's 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 all yeah. it's all a bit wibbly wobbly upside downy but all the bits are there and it does actually make sense which is nice i, I think it just needs a, a tidy up and uh, and it makes sense and so we've got that little bit of uh, earlier when wit and will are sort of talking about you know will's going well you don't really need me do you because you've got all these other people why why, why would you have me uh which makes more it's sense all, it's later. all a bit andre previn isn't it mm. The right bits, but not necessarily in the right order. <laughs> so when we had earlier enter science reasoning experience when they were already on, it's because actually that's when they entered. <laughs> you know, it does actually seem that the stage directions might all be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> They're just not in the right place. <laughs> um, it's an interesting thing that this um, uh, science talking about tediousness beats and buffets down the force and liveliness of brain. And if we're going back to the allegorical thing, um, you know, wit um, and and his will are going out with with these these other these other people. Um, instruction, study, and diligence, and you get a sense now that the the logic of the allegory is starting to pull together. If that makes sense, it's all about doing a PhD. Hmm. 
or at least, or at least a younger person studying. Yes, <laughs> Francis. Um, I've been. I was wondering yesterday, and I'm still wondering. Um, what is the kind of definition of science at this point in history? Is it the same as our <clears throat> definition of science today? Because I would have said science and study are kind of the same thing, or at least related. <clears throat> mm. I, I think it's an excellent question. We we have come across a few texts that have touched on ideas of science and methodology and, and, and questions like that. I suspect it's not quite the same as we think of it today. Yeah. And I don't think the scientific method is, is established in anything like uh, the way we have, have the idea of it today. Alan? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've just been happened to have been reading something on this and the scientific method really starts to come in about the 1590s, 1600 point. Mm. Um, so this 40 years earlier would not have been science in the way that we would recognize it now. Experimental science certainly didn't exist. I mean, you are into the natural philosophers and alchemists more at this period. It, it's something we've been meaning to touch on with the play, uh, The Four Elements, which does function rather like a science lecture, uh, which is from the, the uh, 1520s. Um, so, yeah, it's a really good question to, 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 to actually start nailing down, actually, with this text. Helen? Um, to, two small things. I, I've taken science as uh, a synonym for knowledge. Mm. Right. <clears throat> and also the scientific method fundamentally began when Bacon tried to deep freeze a chicken. <laughs> it killed him, but um, that, that's more or less where the scientific method began. Um, I, 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 I can just see the comments on YouTube now. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> um, any, any additional uh, questions about um, the, the sort of nature of the characters? Will st is still being very willish. Um, um, and uh, I, I do like how he does sort of force wit to come up and say, go on, tell it, tell you how, how you feel, go on. Um, so the bit where Will insists that he's a man and not a boy actually comes after all this elf stuff. Yes, I think it does. Because it, the way we read it, uh, Will had agreed not to call him a boy, but to think of him as a man. And then he goes back to mm. elfy stuff. Yeah, so it's, it is the other way around and it does actually yeah. make logical sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, though, considering we've been going with Lord of the Rings uh, 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 <laughs> analogies, <laughs> the word elf suddenly had a different meaning. <laughs> I have to say this is spot on casting for me, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> exactly what I would be cast for in this play. <laughs> right. Um, okay, so we are at the point where I paused as mid towards the end of the scene. Um, we may have jumped back and then we may be jumping back here. There may be other kinks, but hopefully the narrative is now moving forward. They're going to fight the tedious monster in a moment, uh, or at least they're going to go off stage in a moment to come back on again to fight the tedious monster. Uh, we got to, can we go over to, from Will's lustily spoken, let me claw thee by the back? Because we think that's probably where the break clips. Lustily spoken, let me claw thee by the back. I say you now, sir, he are three against twain. Those at the list, I will at home remain. I have no need to take a nap in my bed. Do so, and here you coo Shakad's head. Well, since it will none otherwise frame, let us twain study, return from whence we came. Agreed. And they all exit. And let us three bestir ourselves like men. I, unlikely things are brought to pass by courage now and then. My will, be always pressed and ready at an inch to save thyself, to succour me, to help at every pinch. Both twain on either side, assault him if ye can, and you shall see me in the midst. Now I will play the man. This is the deadly den, as far as I perceive. Approach we near, and valiant 
valiantly let us the onset give. Come forth, thou monster fell, in drowsy darkness hid, for here is wit, day nature's son, that doth the battle bid. And so we go into Act 4, Scene 2, Tediousness, Wit, Will and Diligence, and probably lots of other people as well, but Tediousness uh, effectively enters here. What princox have we here that dares me to assail? Alas, poor boy, and winnest thou against me to prevail? Full small was he thy friend, who ever sent thee hither. I must drive thee back with shame, or slay thee altogether. Great boast, small roast, I warrant thee, do thy best. Thy head must thy head must serve my turn this day to set my heart at rest. And I must have a leg of thee if I can catch it. First I must quite this brain of thine, if I can reach it. There's a fight, dramatic, exciting, and strikes uh, tediousness strikes at will. Well shifted, Will. Now have at thee, sir, knave. These frescoes shall not serve your turn for all your vaunts so brave. Oh, did I not tell thee thou camest to thy pain? <gasps> help, help, help! Our master is slain! Help, help, help! Where are these lusty bloods that make their match with me? Here lies a pattern for them all to look at and to see, to teach them to conspire against my force and might. To promise for their woman's love to vanquish me and fight. Now let them go and crake. How wisely they have sped. Such is the end of those that seek this curious dame to wed. And exit tediousness. And it really has suddenly turned very panto y, hasn't it? Um, <laughs> oh, no, it hasn't. Um, <laughs> oh, yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and uh, Wit's, Wit's been struck down. Uh, he's, he's out. Uh, he's he's out. <laughs> out for the count. Well, we'll find out in a moment. He, you know, he could be dead. And, um, and we're going to go into uh, a bit of a bit of sing song of which. It's not quite clear who's supposed to be singing what and and how, uh, and I'm just going to split that between probably Will and Recreation, um, uh, because that that will probably work as well as anything else, because um, it's just numbered. It's just literally one and two. So uh, even though there's potentially lots of people on stage, four or five people on stage, um, one of which is you know effectively dead. So who knows? Um, Nice to have a fight scene. Always like a fight scene. Thoughts? I love that line, great boat small roast. Yeah. <laughs> I use that in daily life. <laughs> Definite t-shirt line. Yeah. It's too warm for the green line cape. <laughs> um, I mean, fundamentally, like... what tediousness has done to him is he's bored him out of his skull. Mm. So he stopped functioning. Hmm. Um, mm. Yeah, it's a, that 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 is the thing. How do you how do you fight a tediousness monster? Uh, it's a, it's an interesting uh, question. Yeah. <laughs> Glitter, feather yes, bows. Takes them down with yawns, <laughs> like a sort of tedious Godzilla. <laughs> Put them on a roller coaster. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, any additional thoughts before we go in? Uh, continue the narrative. It says a new scene, but it effectively isn't. It's just a continuation. Uh, so I'll ask Will to read number one and Recreation to read number two. And I'll do the, the first line that just says sing, question mark. Oh, Robin chased him. For God's love haste, see low where he doth lie. It's not cold. I warrant him, I. Give a leg, give an arm, arise, arise. Hold up thy head, lift us thy eyes. Leg to stand upright. An arm to fight a mane. The head to hold thy brains in plight. The eyes to look again. Awake, ye drowned powers, ye sprites for dull with toil. Resign to me this care of yours, and from dead sleep recoil. Think not upon your loathsome luck, but arise and dance with us a pluck. Both sing, give a leg as is before. What, though thou hast not hit the top of thy desire, time is not so far spent as yet to cause thee to retire. Arise and ease thyself of pain, and make thee strong to fight again. 
And I'll just read the singing both. Let not thy foes rejoice, let not thy fo friends lament, let not thy lady's rueful voice in sobs and sighs be spent. Thy faith is plight, forget it not, twixt her and thee to knit the knot. Um, and then we have a additional sing, probably everyone, maybe it's a chorus, I don't know. Dan, say that one. Give a leg, give an arm, arise, arise, etc., etc. This is no deadly wound, it may be cured well. See here what physic we have found, thy sorrows to expel. And Wit lifting himself up, sitting on the ground. Uh, though th this may still be them singing while he does this. The way is plain, the mark is fair. Lodge not thyself in deep despair. What noise is this that ringeth in my ears? A noise that grieveth my mishap with tears. Ah, my mishap, my desperate mishap, on whom ill fortune poureth down all mishap at a clap. What shall become of me? Where shall I hide my head? Oh, what a death it is to live for him that would be dead. But since it chances, chanceth so, whatever white thou be that findeth me here in heavy plight, go, tell her this from me. Causeless I perish here, and cause to curse I have, the time that erst I lived to love, and now must die here, die her slave. The match was overmuch for me. She understood, alas, why hath, hath she this delight to lap in guiltless blood? How did I give her cause to show me this despite, to match me where she wist full well I should be slain in fight? But go, tell her plain, although too late for me. Accursed be the time and hour which first I did her see. Accursed be the wight that willed me first thereto. And cursed, and accursed be they all at once that had therewith to do. Now get thee hence in haste, and suffer me to die, whom scornful chance and lawless love have slain most treacherously. O oh, noble wit! the miracle of God and eke of nature. Why cursest thou thyself and every other creature? What causeth thee thine innocent dear lady to accuse? Who would lament it more than she to hear this woeful news? Why wilt thou die, whereas thou mayst be sure of health, whereas thou seekst a plain pathway to worship and to wealth? Not every foil doth make a fall, nor every soil doth slay. Comfort thyself, be sure thy luck will mend from day to day. These and gentlewomen of good skill are come to make you sound. They know which way to salve your sore and how to cure your wound. Good sir, be ruled by her then, and pluck your spirit to you. There is no doubt, but you shall find your loving lady true. Ah, well, art thou alive that doth my heart some ease? The sight of thee, sweet boy, my sorrows doth appease. How hast thou escaped? What fortune thee befell? It was no trusting to my hands. My heels did serve me well. I ran with open mouth to cry for help amain, and as good fortune would, I hit upon these twain. I thank both thee and them. What will ye have me do? To rise and dance a little space with us too. What then? That done, repair again to study and instruction. Take better hold by their advice, your foe to set upon. Can any recompense recover this my fall? My life to yours, it may be mended all. Speak well. I have no doubt, sir, it shall be as you wish, would wish. But yet this repulse of mine they will lay in my dish. No man shall let them know thereof, unless yourself do do it. Do it. On that condition, a God's name, fall we to it. Nay, stand we to it, and let us fall no more. Will, dan will dancing serve, and I will dance until my bones be sore. Pipe us up a galliard minstrel to begin. And here let Will call for dances one after another. <clears throat> Come, damsel, in good faith and let me have you in. Let him practice in dancing all things to make himself breathless. Enough at once. Now leave and let us part. 
This exercise hath done me good, even to the very heart. Let us be bold with you more, with you more acquaintance to take, and dance around yet, one, yet once more for my sake. Enough is enough. Farewell, and at your need, use my acquaintance, if it may stand you instead. Right worthy damsels both, I know you, I know you seek no gains in recompense of this desert, your undeserved pains. But look what other thing my service may devise, to show my thankful heart in any enterprise. Be ye as bold therewith, as I am bold on you, and thus with hearty thanks I take my leave as now. Farewell, friend wit, and since you are relieved, think not upon your foil whereat you were so grieved, but take your heart to you and give attempt once more. I warrant you to speed much better than before. And it says exuant, but there may be some additional dancing there. And I do feel we just need to briefly recapitulate what's going on because of the reading bits out of order. Uh, remember, the three people who were supposed to be going with him on his journey actually left him before he fought tediousness. So he didn't turn up with study and instruction, all those uh, revising techniques with which he could beat tediousness and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and power through to knowledge uh, as personified by science. Um, so he's beaten by tediousness because he doesn't have all these friends. And then recreation turns up, recreation or recreation, both in the same package. It brings poor wit back to life with uh, promises of dancing and fun. Though to be fair to recreation, does say once you're done with this, you should go back to studying and doing other things. <laughs> um, so it's not a vice figure. Um, it's uh, a fun dancing lady. Um, in theory, there are two of them. It looks like someone's been cut. Mm. It looks like it's uh, possibly been reduced um, uh, to, uh, to just one, one dancing lady. Um, and uh, yes, I can I can talk about contrasting this with the uh, earlier version uh, later. But uh, thoughts from you about this this little, you know, uh, this this moment of recreation. It's I so I really oh, uh, Elizabeth first. I'm sorry, Helen. Um, I feel like I get lost with the business moving around with some of the uh, cut and paste that's going to be awry. But I haven't, and which is still incredibly compelling. And his marriage to science is actually still quite compelling this far into the play. Mm. It doesn't drag mm. at all. Yeah, it's got a good narrative thrust. Once we get past that, and that initially open scene, which, uh, which uh, felt like hard work, is actually uh, the, the play isn't, which is nice. Mm. Helen? Yeah, I, I, it's extraordinarily good advice for studying. Mm. Um, a little bit of recreation can can really help. Mm. Uh, dancing is dancing is good. Mm. Gets the brain or moving. Tai Chi or yoga or something. But <coughs> blood moving around the blo the uh, the brain always always good. Um, yes, uh, it's Alan. I saw a hand. I was just thinking that um, Will seems to have changed his tune quite considerably in that last sequence. Um, you know, he, he's much less um, suspicious of others than he, he appeared in the first half of the play. Well, of, of the nature of recreation. Oh, well, you know, he, he was making comments that were, others were commenting on yesterday that, uh, you know, he, he was misanthropic and so on. Mm. Um, but, he, you know, you then get come good damsel in good faith. Um, you know, which is quite a radical change in attitude from him. Well, she did bring him back to life. Uh... <laughs> yes, I think uh, Will's no, had it, a, Will's it was had a Wit who was brought shot. back to life, not Will. Well, yeah, but you know, they are They're the same person. Yeah. They're two aspects of the same person, and Will's had a very nasty shock. Mm. Yeah. He's been won over. Mm. Yeah. I, I like your change, Rob, to the because in the text you have gentlewoman of good skill. I was reading um, gentle news of goodwill here, which made from the news. What do you mean news? News are the women here that you're mm. talking about. So I like that one. Mm. 
it's almost this weird dance of death as well that you know wits doing too much and he just keeps going and i i wonder if there's, there's an element there and of course we got the sort of george um uh st george uh the pageant kind of uh, folk thing here with him being brought back to life um and and that sort of uh narrative that uh that we we see in potentially in folk folk drama of the period though it's slightly difficult to tell because most of our examples are much later galliard's quite an energetic dance as well mm. It's the way Will calls for more dances. It's Will who's pushing the pace on that as well. So it's his Will above brains again. Just a fun fellow, excitable fellow. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, yes, the song in the, uh, the earlier Wit and Science, the play of, um, has uh, the singers are honest recreation, comfort, quickness, and strength. So there's, there's four of them. Um, uh, and so um, the fact that they don't get a name check here doesn't mean they weren't there, um, but they're just no longer personified in, a, in, 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 in part. Um, okay, any additional thoughts? No, okay, well, let's see where, where he's still presumably dancing or he's just stopped dancing. Uh, the scene effectively continues. We're going to have the entrance of idleness uh, some, at some point here. So, Wit and Will still on stage. <clears throat> One dance for thee and me, my boy. Come on. Dance you, sir, if you please, and I will look upon. This gear doth make me sweat and breathe apace. Sir, ease yourself a while. Here's a resting place. Home well, and make my bed, for I will take a nap. Oh, ignorance, have I given out? Sure, a and it please your mastership here in my dame's lap. Come, come, lie down, and thou shalt see none like me to entertain thy bones and thee oppressed with pain. Come, come, and ease thee in my lap, and if it please thee, take a nap. A nap that shall delight thee so, that fancies all will thee forego. By musing still, what canst thou find, by want of will and restless mind? A mind that mars and mangles all, and breedeth jars to work thy fall. Come, gentle wit, I thee really require, <coughs> and thou shalt hit thy chief desire, thy chief desire, thy hoped play. First ease thee here, and then away. My bones are stiff, and I am wearied sore, and still me think I faint and feeble more and more. Wake me again in time, for I have things to do, as you will me for mine ease, I do assent thereto. Welcome with all my heart. Sir boy, hold here this fan, and softly cool his face. Sleep soundly, gentleman. His char is charred well now, ignorance, my son. Thou seest all this, how featly it is done. But wast thou why? Nay, Bonfay, mother of not I. Well, I want to, to gain works trick and trim. Should rejoice my heart to chance coots with him. Dost thou remember how many I have served in the like sort? It doth my heart go to think on this sport. Will thou see this proper fellow serve it so? Should give twenty pence to see it, and twenty pence more. Come off then, let me see thee in his doublet and hose. Shall see a tall fellow, mother, I suppose. Help off with this sleeve softly for fear of waking. We shall leave the gentleman in a pretty taking. Give me thy coat, hold this in thy hand. This fellow would be married to science, I understand. But here we leave him, tell me another tale. Now let us make him look somewhat stale. There lie and there be, the proverb is verified. I am neither idle, nor yet well occupied. Mother, must I have his coat? Now, mother, I must. Child be a lively lad with hatest and tusk. Sleep sound, and have no care to occupy thy head, as near unto thy body now as if thou hadst been dead. For idleness had won, and 
holy thee possess, and utterly disabled thee from having thy request. Come on with me, my son, let's go couch again, and let this lusty ruffling wit here like a fool remain. Uh, okay, so interesting things going on here. Maybe idleness and <coughs> ignorance were on in the dance earlier um, and uh, just unspoken uh, spoken of because they're both um, um, personified as, uh, as uh, female and um, or at least uh, one of them is um, idleness is and um, yeah, they uh, having exhausted him, he's lulled into the chair to have a little nap. And they take his coat and they replace it with the coat of ignorance. So he's uh, he's becoming actively, and the way that ignorance is is given a yokel accent, suggesting that if you are of uh, a yokel extraction, you are therefore stupid. I couldn't do it, Rob. Well, I'm not as good as the yokel accents. <laughs> Uh, and it does seem at this point it is a very well established fake rustic accent that exists all over the place. Um, but yes, that that that's sort of the, what's happening is that it's a very old school morality thing of you know you replace the clothing of of one thing to be pressed and turned into a clothing of another, and that changes your your character. Uh, they haven't drawn on his face this time, which is nice to see um, when he was asleep. That's what they they did in the other two plays. Um, um, but yeah, we don't really get introduced properly to ignorance and idleness. It's sort of unless we weren't seeing their reading their names in the script, I'm I'm wondering how clear that is for what's going on in the audience. Is there oh oh, oh. oh. Um, is there another bit um, missing here or, or transposed maybe? I think it's no. I think it's um, it is all flowing one into the other but i uh, i don't think there's anything missing here i think this is just how it's been adapted from the the earlier text which had a lot more business mm. this feels like a truncated version quite actively delivered and also de-problematized because there's a brilliantly comic scene in the other between ignorance and idleness where uh ignorance is the idleness tries to teach ignorance his name uh syllable by syllable it is both brilliant and also quite disturbing uh, at the same time and I'm not surprised actually that it's taken out because I, I think even then this this question of I a natural fool and unnatural fools you know it, it feels like you're punching down on on, on someone who's neurodivergent in, in, in the original play um, it is also disgustingly funny as well um, and so it's, it's it's this really problematic scene um, that is not here at all. And so there's a whole expansion on these two characters that you just don't get here. That's really interesting then. Someone was actually thinking about that possibly. Mm. You know, you know, even, I mean, I know there's a lot of stuff that we read that we think, oh, that would have to be taken out, but obviously that was going on even, even then. Yes, well, it, it, and, and in, in a sense with, uh, you know, households, there, there, there might be you know, neurodivergent and other disabled uh, people who are embedded in the household and the household looks after them on some level. There's, mm. there's an interesting social contract that, uh, that exists um, and which these plays do engage with. Um, in that, um, in that, uh, that bit where um, idleness uh, makes wit fall asleep, I was strangely reminded of that scene in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> the poppy scene. Yes. <laughs> mm. yeah. And it's oddly sexless. I mean, we were talking about how uh, Will was suddenly quite nice to recreation. In, I think in the earlier version, it's all a bit more sexy. It's like he's being lured mm. away from the the wife to be um by by sexy recreation and uh, and things and you don't have any of that here or at least i didn't detect any it didn't feel very sexualized mm -hmm. so interesting thing so poor poor wit he's died he's danced himself into exhaustion and now he's had a nap and he's been he's been rendered ignorant by a change of clothing yeah <clears throat> not having a good day is he no <laughs> <laughs> Any additional thoughts before we go into fi Act 5, the close of the play? 
No, his okay. Mo his oh, sorry, mother, Helen. His mother told him it couldn't be done quickly and it needed a lot of hard work. Mm. And he's constantly trying to find the easy way. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yes, he mm. didn't. Uh, he didn't stop dancing and get on with some studying. No, he just kept dancing. Um... <laughs> okay, Act Five, Scene One. Wit, science, and reason are in this scene at some point. Wit is currently alone. Presumably, he's woken up. Up and to go. Why sleep? I hear so sound. How falls it out that I am left upon the naked ground? God grant that all be well, whilst I lay dreaming here. Methinks all is not as it was, nor as I would it were. And yet I wot not why, but so my fancy's gift gives me, that some one thing or other in my tire that grieves me. They are but fancies, let them go. To science now will I, my suit and business yet once again to labour and apply. So Wit, being incapable of seeing that uh, what's precisely wrong with his changed attire, goes to, uh, to uh, uh, science and reason. What has become the trailing of Wit, our spouse that would be? Daughter, I fear all is not as it should be. Yes, yes, have ye no doubt, all is well and shall be well. What one art thou? Thereof, how canst thou tell? Reason. Reason. Reason, most noble sir, and you, my dear, my lady dear, how have you done in all this time since first I saw you here? The fool is mad, I mean. Stand back and touch me not. You speak not as you think. Have you me forgot? I never saw thee in my life until this time I wrote. Thou art some mad brain or some fool or some disguised sort. God's fish hooks, and know you not me? I have been well at ease indeed to be acquainted with thee. Hop Halliday, marry, this is pretty cheer. I have lost myself, I cannot tell where. An old said saw it is, and too true I find. Soon hot, soon cold, out of sight, out of mind. What, madam, what meanest this sudden change? What means this scornful look, this countenance so strange? Is it your fashion to use your lovers at the first, or have all women this delight to scold and to be cursed? Good fellow, when art thou? What is thy name? I ween ye are disposed to make at me some game. I am the son of Lady Nature. My name is Wit. Thou shalt say it long, so long enough, ere we believe it. Thou wit? Nay, thou art some mad thing out of thy wit. Unto yourself this trial I remit. Look on me better, mark my person well. Thy look is like to one that came out of hell. If thou be wit, let's see, what tokens thou canst tell? How camest thou first acquainted here? What said we? How did we like thy suit? What entertainment made we? What tokens? Yea, what tokens? Speak and let us know. Mm. Tokens, good store, I can rehearse a row. First, <laughs> as I was advised by my mother nature, my lackey will presented you with my picture. Stay there, now look, how these two faces agree. This is the very same that you received from me. From thee? Why, look, they are no more like than chalk to cheese, than black to white. To put thee out of doubt, if thou think we say not true, it would for good for thee in a glass thy face to view. Well remembered, and a glass I have indeed, which glass you gave to me to use as at need. Hast thou the glass which I to wit did give? I have it in my purse, and I will keep it while I live. This makes me muse, how should he come thereby? Sir, muse no more, for it, it is even I to whom you gave the glass, and here it is. We are content, thou try thy case by this. Either my glass is wonderfully spotted, or else my face is wonderfully blotted. This is not my coat. Why, where had I this weed? 
by the mass I look like a very fool indeed. Oh, hats of hats, a oh, rueful chance to me. Oh, idleness, woe worth the time that I was ruled by thee. Why did I lay my head within thy lap to rest? Why was I not advised by her that wished and willed me best? Oh, ten times treble blessed whites, whose corpse in graves do lie, that art not driven to behold these wretched cares which I on me, you furies all, on me have poured out your spite. Come now and slay me at the last and rid my sorrows quite. What coast shall me receive? Where shall I show my head? The world will say this same is he that, if he list, had sped. This same is he that took an enterprise in hand. This same is he that scarce one blow his enemy did withstand. This same is he that fought and fell in open field. This same is he that in the song of idleness did yield. This same is he that was in way to win the game, to join himself whereby he should have won immortal fame, and now is wrapped in woe and buried in despair. O oh, happy case for thee if death would rid thee quite of care. We'll just pause there as, um, yeah, there's uh, many a... Uh, uh, Time your one's gone out partying and uh, come back slightly uh, worse for wear the next day and just, uh, oh, the, 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 the misery. Oh, my God, what have I done? What am I wearing? And now, Helen, the answer to your question, why has he got the glass? <laughs> Looking glasses so he can see himself. <laughs> he, in fact, I think they have done something to his face. Yeah, they just, they, it's just not in the dialogue. Yeah, but they, but they definitely, they've... Mm -hmm. Burnt cork tim or something. Yeah, um, that, that, that we, we, we've discussed uh, previously the slightly problematic nature of uh, of uh, him covering his face in dirt in that fashion uh, does does not work in a, a modern modern presentation. Um, uh, that's somewhat problematic, um, but uh, it's not intended uh, to be anything other than just making him look different. Um, but uh, we've suggested turning him into a clown before, so. Um, Especially giving him a clown face, mate, uh, face paint, um, so that nobody will nobody will recognise him. He's a fool. He's a clown. Alan, I would have thought actually the way to portray him is basically the lad who's been out on the stag night, mm. and his oh, yeah. mates have uh, stitched him. Mm. But yes, they've uh, made him made him into a fool. He's made to look foolish, mm. and nobody recognises him. Um, poor thing. Okay, we're almost into the final final um, <coughs> leg of the journey. Thoughts uh, at, uh, about his uh, his his uh, uh, the reactions of uh, reason and science, and uh, you know the, the the family unit he's trying to marry into. This is not the look he was hoping for. No. The mother seems to have disappeared. Mm. It's interesting this questions about doubling. Doubling. Mm, I'm wondering. I don't know. Because well, w Will's disappeared. Where did Will go? Yeah, good question. You know, before the song of yeah, idleness, Will disappears. He says he's going to watch him dancing, and then we never hear a thing from him again. Uh, that's we not might later on. True. Yeah, yeah, no, but at the moment he's not there. Yeah. And I don't see a reason why he shouldn't be there, apart from just giving him a break. Bless his cotton socks. <laughs> um, maybe it's just to give him a break. He's been on almost continuously. I don't yeah. think he's actually had a break in the narrative so far. Yeah. Okay, so Act 5, Scene 2. And, uh, well, poor Wits feeling shame. So, what naturally happens now? Shame? Who calls for shame? Here is a merchant shame for thee to tame. A shame come to you all, for I am almost lame with trudging up and down to them that lose their game. And here is one whom thou must rightly blame, that hath preferred his folly to his fame. Who, this good fellow? What call you his name? Wit, that on wooing to Lady Science came. 
Come aloft, child. Let me see what friskles you can fret. If he has been deserved it, let him be well bet. Oh, spare me with the whip and slay me with thy knife. Ten thousand times more dear to me were present death than life. Nay, nay, my friend, thou shalt not die as yet. Remember in what case Dame Nature left thee wit, and how thou hast abused the same, thou hast deceived all our hope, as all the world may see. A shame, come to it. Remember what fair words and promises thou didst make, that for my daughter's love no pains thou wouldst forsake. Remember in what sort we had a care of thee, thou hast deceived all our hope, as all the world may see. A shame, come to it. Remember how instruction should have been followed still, and how thou wouldst be ruled by, not, by none but by will. How idleness has crept, and reigneth in thy breast. How ignorance a son hath holy thee possessed. A shame, come to it. O oh, woeful wretch, to whom shall I complain? What self may serve to salve my sore, to redress my pain? Nay, I can tell thee more. Remember how thou wast subdued of tediousness right now. Remember with what crakes thou went unto his den, against the good advice and counsel of thy men. What recreation did for thee in these thy rueful haps, how the second time thou fell into the lap. A shame come to thee. Oh, let me breathe a while and hold thy heavy hand. My grievous faults with shame enough I understand. Take ruth and pity on my plaint, or else I am forlorn. Let not the world continue thus in laughing me to scorn. Madam, if I be he to whom you once were bent, with whom to spend your, your time some time you were content. If any hope be left, if any recompense be able to recover this forepast negligence, oh, help me now, poor wretch, in this most heavy plight, and furnish me yet once again with tediousness to fight. Further, be good to thee some tender years, See how he doth bewail his folly past with tears. Old slave, take thou this his company for thy labour. We are content at her request to take you to our favour. Come in and dwell with us till time shall serve. And from instructions rule, look that thou never swerve. Within we shall provide to set you up once more. This scourge hath taught you. What default was in you heretofore? And they go off because uh, there's nothing like entertainment of watching someone being flogged. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> and this yeah, is. Took, took yeah. me some time to work out that that was what was happening. Mm. Yeah, the absence of a stage direction. But um, yeah, he's. Um, this isn't the first time we've come across a play where the educational system relies upon flogging to um, to move the. Uh, the narrative forward. Uh, we had this in Occupation and Idleness. That's going back to the 15th century. So you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good old uh, theatrical tradition of uh, if you don't learn by uh, by uh, by being led to learning, uh, the the stick of being the having the living daylights beaten out of you is uh, is always there. Mm. Um, so yes, it's um. But he's going to fight with tediousness again. He's going to have another go. Mm. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> A little sigh, uh, Helen, of just, oh, good. Another assault on tediousness. Yeah. But we know how to defeat tediousness now. You just sing. And dance. Yeah, mm. exactly. It's like well, I no, keep expecting that, that's you to be how, to turn up. That's how you <laughs> recover from being beaten by tediousness. Mm. Yeah. But to actually defeat tediousness and continue studying. Mm. He's got to pick up mm. his three three amigos now to uh, to uh, to go um, and uh, you know 
make sure you don't shoot the invisible swordsman and uh, take out uh, tediousness. That's uh, that's the important thing. Um, okay, uh, let's rattle through to the end then. I think we've got several, they call them scenes, but they're not really. And we mentioned where was Will? Will returns. Once in my life, I have an odd half hour to spare to ease myself of all my travail and my care. I stood not still so long this 20 days I ween, but ever more sent forth on messages I've been. Such trudging, such toil, by the mass was never seen. My body is worn out and spent with labor clean. And this it is that makes me look so lean, that lets my growth and makes me seem a squall. What then, although my stature be not tall? Yet I am as proper as you, so neat and cleanly, and have my joints as commandment full of activity. What should a servant do with all this flesh and bones that makes them run with leaden heels and stir themselves like stones? Give me a proper squire, much after my pitch, and mark how he from place to place will squitch. Fair or foul, thick or thin, mire or dusty, cloud or rain, light or dark, clear nor misty, ride or run, to or fro, bad or good, a neat little fellow on his business with scud. These great lubbers are neither active nor wise that feed till they sleep and sleep out their eyes. So heavy, so dull, so untoward in their doing. That it is a good sight to see them leave working. But all this the while, though I stand prating here, I see not my master, I left him snorting here. And having uh, created enough of a distraction while everybody walks off and uh, preparing to walk back on stage again, uh, we'll exit. Uh, we go into uh, next scene. Science, Wit and Will are going to be on stage. To them instruction, study, diligence and tediousness. My own dear wit, the hope of my avail, my care, my comfort, my treasure and my stuff. The heart of grace our enemy to assail. Lay up these things which you have heard discussed. So doing undoubtedly, you cannot fail. To win the field, shape all these happy spirits. Drag your friends to call your throat to wail, to let the dust, and then the game is yours. Here in this closet, ourself will sit and see your manly feats and your success in fight. Strike home courageously for you and me, knowing where and how to fend and how to smite. In any wise be ruled by these three, they shall direct both you and will aright. Farewell, and let our loving counsel be at every hand before you in your fight. Here in my sight, good man and madam, sit and view that when I list, I may look upon you. This face, this noble face, this lively, lively hue, shall harden me, shall make our enemy rue. O oh, faithful mates that have this care of me, how shall I ever recompense your pains with gold or fee? Come now, and as you please, enjoin me how to do it, and you shall see me pressed and serviceable to it. Why, master, wither away? What haste, am I nobody? What will? We may not miss thee for no money. Welcome, good Will, and do as thou art bid. This day or never must tediousness be rid. God speed us well. I will make a one at all essays. Thou shalt watch to take him as certain bays. Come not in the throng, but save thyself always. You twain on either side, first with your sword and buckler, after the first conflict, Fight with your sword and daggers. You, sir, with a javelin and your target in your hand, see how he can his deadly strokes withstand. Keep at the foin, come not within his reach, until you see what good advantage you may catch. Then hardily leave him not, till time you strike him dead. And of all other parts, especially, save your head. Is this all? For I would have, I would fain have done. I would we were at it. I care not how soon. Now, when you please, I have no more to tell, but heartily to pray for you and wish you well. I thank you. Go thou and bid the battle, Will. 
Come out, thou monster fell, that hast desired to spill the knot and linked love of science and of wit. Come, try the quarrel in the field, and fight with us a fit. And hopefully Tediousness is uh, back online to say his lines, so Tedious comes out of his cave. A doughty dust these four boys will do. I will eat them by morsels two and two. Thou fightest for a wife. A rod, a rod, had I missed this, I would have laid on load, and beat thy brain and this my club together, and made thee safe enough for returning hither. Ah, foul horson, what a sturdy thief is it, it is. But we will pelt thee, knave, until for woe thou piss. Let me come to that elf. Nay, nay, thou shalt have work enough to save thyself. And they fight. <laughs> Take breath and change your weapons, play the man. Somewhat it was that made thee come again, thou stickest somewhat better to thy tackling, I see. But what, no force? Ye are but Jack Spratt to me. Have hold, here is a morsel for thee to eat. And he strikes. Here's a pen to make your nose heart, heart fret. There is a blow able to fell a hog. And here is a foin behind for a mad dog. Hold, 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 the lover is down. Oh! Strike off his head while I hold him by the crown. Thou monstrous wretch, thou mortal foe to me and mine, which evermore at my good luck and fortune did, didst repine. Take here thy just desert and payment for thy hire. Thy head this day shall me prefer unto my heart's desire. O oh, noble wit, the praise, the game is thine. Up his head upon your spear. Well, here a joyful sign. Oh, valiant knight, oh, conquest full of praise. Oh, bliss of God to see these happy days. You, you, my faithful squires, deserve no less, whose tried trust, well known to me in my distress, and certain hope of your fixed faith and fast goodwill made me attempt this famous fact most needful to fulfill. To you I yield great thanks, to me redounds the gain. Now home apace and ring it out that tediousness is slain. Tediousness, tediousness is slain. slain! And we're left alone with science and wit. I hear and see the joyful news wherein I take delight that tediousness, our mortal foe, is overcoming fight. I see the sign of victory, the sign of manliness, the heat of happy haps, the joy that the tongue cannot express. Our welcome fame from day to day forever shall arise. Avaunt ye griping cares and loach no more in me, for you have lost and I have won continual joys and fee. Now let me freely touch, and freely you embrace, and let my friends with open mouth proclaim my blissful case. The world shall know, thou not, and shall blow out your fame, and true report shall send abroad your everlasting name. Now let our parents go, be certified of this, so that our marriage may forthwith proceed as meet it is. We lost the last line there, Elizabeth. Uh, do you, uh, come with me again, please. Come after me, all five, and I will lead you in. My pain is past, my gladness to begin. My task is done, my heart is set at rest. My foe subdued, my lady's love possessed. I thank my friends whose help I had at need. And thus you see how wit and science are agreed. We twain that henceforth one soul in bodies twain must dwell. Rejoice, I pray you all with me, fr my friends, and fare ye well. And the play ends. And yes, when it embraces its inner panto, it really does, uh, does come alive, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> uh, if you all work together, you'll win. Um, and I, I do love the way that it's sort of like a boxing match and you've got the, the people at the side going, yeah, no, no, hook, hook, do, 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 no, 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 don't get, don't get it. Yeah, and all that sort of stuff. I thought that, that works really nicely. Um, 
and uh, there was a, a line that Wit didn't say because I'm sure Wit wasn't sure if it was a stage direction or a line of dialogue, and okay. I don't know either. Uh, let Will Trip You Down could be a line of dialogue. Mm. It could also be a stage direction. It's not what really clear what it is. That? It has it in a different, in Roman font. Yeah, uh, so it's, it's in italics. Yeah. Um, oh, right, yes. Because I didn't know what it was. Yeah, it's, it's indented and it's in Roman as opposed to the rest, which is in black letter. So mm. uh, right. at least whoever the typesetter was thought it to be a stage direction. Mm. But it sort of functions as dialogue as well. And it's sort of oh, yeah. a, weird, a weird line. Um, the you is weird. That's, you know, trip him down. Mm -hmm. I would say it was a stage direction. But, by, you know, it, it feels like it, that's the action. I don't know. Um, but that's, that's, that's one to throw into the rehearsal room and let the actors fight it out. Um, but the Wilson Rowe really steals a show. Hmm? I feel like they're a very very camaraderie because I think Rick is uh, seventeen and Will is eleven. Mm. They really yeah. steal the show. Mm. They bounce off each other really well. And it is the fundamental difference. I mean, the whole thing seems to be a top-down rewrite in terms of the actual words. I haven't done a proper analysis of between the two. Uh, we can do that now, now that we've done the read-through quite efficiently. Um, but Will is the sort of new factor. Will doesn't really feature in the earlier version. There is a character who does some toing and froing, but basically all they do is do a speech as they come on to break up the action a bit, and then because he's delivering the glass, I think. He's basically given the glass at the beginning and he's sort of wandering around looking for where Wit is to hand it to him so that he gets handed the glass at the, uh, to recognise himself. I could be wrong on that front. But he's, he's basically wandering around for a while, but he doesn't interact. So Will, as, an, as an, a dynamic element of the, of the uh, allegory, um, doesn't exist in the earlier version. That's a, something that this version is interested in, mm. is this small comedy role. Quite literally small, mm. but you know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dan, I wonder if um, I mean obviously this is a, this is a full well, cut script or whatever. But if the role of tediousness had that stage direction in it, um, literally yeah. the part because it comes right before he's going to trip down, and this was kind of the direction either that was in his part, it's the the scroll that he had, or that was in the book, as in this the the prompter's book. Mm. Uh, to indicate to tediousness specifically that you're going to fall right here and Will's going to, is going to do it. Then it reads like a director's mm. note to an actor who keeps not doing the motion, isn't it? Now, mm. Let Will trip you down, okay? Yeah. It's got to follow Will, okay? <laughs> Don't just fall over, okay? <laughs> Remember that next time. <laughs> Solid note there. Solid note. <laughs> it sure seems like it. It does. Yeah. It does. <laughs> Feels a bit pointed, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. The, there is a theory that I read somewhere that the, 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 the bits that seemed a little um, contracted with the ignorance and idleness and the dancing stuff may have been post-contracted to reduce the cast size or, or something. I don't quite buy that myself. Um, but and, and I don't necessarily think it's been cut post production if that makes sense I, I think it seems like the production's done this and that it it, it seems to work um you know the the misplaced scene aside um you know which is just clearly just a cock up of the printers um presumably i don't know how it's paginated mm -hmm. whether it literally is just pages transposed or something um but um yeah so we're at the end overall thoughts what would you, what would you like to do with this? <laughs> I would I like to. Uh, um, sorry, uh, Sarah first, then Elizabeth. As sorry. like a massive monster. Sorry, Sarah, Sarah say again. Sarah. Sarah say again. Or have you frozen? We're having some real technical <laughs> problems today. I think it's the heat. Uh, Sarah's um, frozen. Let's go to Elizabeth then. Just comparing um, marriage of wit and science to a contemptuous uh, case of prodigality and liberality. Mm. 
And now that written, written science is finished, I think I like prodigality more. Mm. And liberality more. This feels much smaller world. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm much less dynamic. Um, it's got its fun bits, but it is hammering home its point in a slightly more, I don't know, I don't want to say laboured way. It's, uh, it's not quite as fun. No, I mean, it's, it, um, it certainly picks up in the second half, I felt. Mm. I, I, I've enjoyed today much more than I did um, the bits we did yesterday. Mm. Well, it's interesting in the third one, the uh, third version, which uh, some of the people in this room have done, you know, all of this action in this whole play was condensed down to about 30, 40 minutes. It was the first half of a, most of it was the first half of a presentation. And they sort of trimmed all the fat out and then put other random stuff in. Um, so it's quite interesting to see these slight variations. And I, I think there's, 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 there's almost a research project to play around with that if that was what we did, but we don't. So. Uh, <laughs> we might do something as an option. Sarah, are you with us now? Um, I don't know, am I? Yes, you are. Uh, what I were you saying before? Um, I was just being very flippant. I was saying that if I stage this, I would like to have tediousness as an actual monster. Mm -hmm. Like oh, yeah. sort of, you know, scales and a tail and horns and have him kind of lumbering onto stage because it does ha really have that panto feel to it. And um, I, I really liked it, actually. I didn't think I was going to when we started it yesterday, but I, I did enjoy it. It was sort of tidy, mm. pleasingly tidy, mm. Mm. apart from that bit that was not... not Weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the play's <laughs> fault, that's the printer's fault. No, exactly. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm going to call in uh, final thoughts now, even though we're actually relatively early. That's the thing about a smaller room. We finish quicker. Um, so, uh, but uh, I think final thoughts, Alan, on this, uh, on, uh, on this particular marriage. I think it worked well. I think the danger would be that <clears throat> trying to do it in such a way that it didn't become a panto um, <clears throat> could be a problem. I'm quite content for it to be a panto. Um, mm. um, I mean, you know, might be more of a market in it for that. Um, <laughs> what would you want it to be if it's not a panto? Perhaps is a better question to ask. Um, I think there, there is some good meat in there in terms of um, some of the arguments. Um, and I think it would be very easy to gradually get overtaken by um, um, the temptations to go down, excess costuming or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Helen, final thoughts from you. Well, I'm afraid it isn't what you might call the favourite, my favourite play that I've ever come across or read. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm... <sighs> I suppose one of the reasons is that it reminds me too awfully of um, actual trying to study for something where the joy has gone out of it. Um, it it's, it's all too real and too utterly horrible. No, it's not my play. <laughs> Well, the question is, is, is it even my favourite version of this play? <laughs> oh, well, that I don't know. I don't know the other versions. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's, it, I'm, sure, I'm sure various people in this room did the version, variation three, so I'm, find, I'm finding a collective amnesia mm -hmm. interesting. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Dan? I actually have to look up to see whether I participated in that, mm -hmm. and I haven't looked up yet, but I honestly don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, I'll probably remember this play more, and it's because of um, I was sharing um, what Sarah thought as well. I'm picture me I um, picture a dragon um, as tediousness. I keep thinking Princess Bride the entire time during this um, during today's um, session. Um, <laughs> certainly, I agree with Francis. It started out slowly, but it picked up. Um, yeah, Panto Outdoor Edinburgh Fringe um, Festival. I think uh, you can sorry, so, sorry, we had some crossover there. Uh, Alan, um, were, were you saying something? No. Costuming or whatever. Uh, yeah, we're, we're really not getting you, Alan. Um, so, uh, I, uh, Dan, did you want to, um, uh, did you have anything else? 
I, I like it personally as these are pieces with which I'm not very familiar. So for me, it's great to learn about what sold back then, or at least ne not necessarily sold, but what was staged back then and what was dr the dramatic structure. Um, what, what did these, what, di what did people think would sell um, mm. to the audiences yeah. back then? So for me, I enjoy that aspect of it. Uh, Francis, final thoughts? Uh, nothing really to add to what I said just now about it starting off slowly and picking up towards the end. Mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth, do you have any final, final thoughts? Uh, no, no, thank you. Excellent. Sarah, any final thoughts from you? Uh, you've, you've had mine pretty much. Yeah, I, I just, I, I found it really entertaining and actually the, the, the thing that that makes Helen not like it is the thing that makes me like it actually because it really <laughs> reminded me of studying and like oh my god I really I have to translate another thousand lines of Beowulf and it's like I, yeah the thing of like oh you have to have your recreation but then don't take too much of it and don't you know I, I loved it it, it really it really uh, rang true for me. Well, you see, there's someone who succeeded as opposed to someone who failed. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, and just no, finally, uh, just to go back to Alan, uh, uh, if there was, uh, if you're still there. No, you're completely fragmented, not getting anything at all, I'm afraid. Um, it seems to be our lot for today. We've had some pretty janky connections all the way through, so we're just going to have to uh, close the session now while, uh, while it still holds. Um, uh, some thumbs up, some, some, some uh, moderation, some, some thumbs down. Um, I have to say of the three versions, it's, it's not my favourite of the three, but there's material from it that I would quite like to use to mix into the other two so i kind of think of this as a spectrum of uh, parallel universes where we might want to just try and blur the lines between where they live um mm. it's most useful for giving us an opening to the original iteration which we don't have um and of which i don't think the third version really has already veered so far away from the original that that's not actually a very good analog so it's quite helpful i think uh, as as material to fill in the gaps in the first version, um, I think it still works actually in its 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 second version. Actually, I I said, I think off camera that uh, I was perhaps a little dismissive yeah, but, uh, of no, I of, uh, uh, of um, I think that was Alan's comment about two minutes ago. Um, that's that's the internet today, and um, I, I I said off camera that uh, I th this one didn't engage in the allegory so well, and I, I was I was clearly very wrong, uh, largely because we'd been reading the bit where we hadn't quite got round to it settling down. Um, but it seems to do all the things quite well. Um, mm. So, oh, I don't know. I'm changing my mind. Do, do, do I? Prefer, I don't know. Should I play favourites? Probably not. Thanks to everyone in the room, uh, and um, it's uh, it's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from them. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.